Today, I'm gonna to show you how to run a custom Python script within Home Assistant. The method I'm about to show you is the best way I've found to do this after hours upon hours of research because it lets you do really basic things like a simple hello world example, but it also lets you get extremely complicated and install third-party packages and dependencies to do something super complicated like this. Oh look, it's Captain Procrastination reporting for duty. Decided to grace us with your presence today, huh? This is a custom Python script I made where I'm making several API calls to OpenAI. I'm then playing sound out loud. And as you can imagine, that requires external libraries. You can get as creative as you want with this script that you create. So with that being said, let's jump into it. For the purposes of this video, we are going to use a third party library called PyScript. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the best because it's the easiest to set up, but it's also one that supports external dependencies. There are two websites, which I'll put the links down in the description below. The first is just an installation guide, and the second is the GitHub page that shows us the full configuration. So let's run through it now. Step one is to install the library. Now, the easiest way to do this is using hacks. You simply search for PyScript using hacks and install it that way. If you're like, I don't know what hacks is, let me show you because it's a really cool feature. If you already have it, I'll put timestamps in the description below and you can just skip this portion of the video. To install hacks, we want to run this command on whichever machine your home assistant is running on. So if it's running on your local PC, just open up a terminal window and type this command in. If you're using a container like I am, you're gonna want to go into your container first. So we're gonna copy this docker exec command now, my container is called Home Assistant, so I'm going to paste this command in. Make sure to replace Home Assistant with the name of the container that you gave. This will bring up a bash terminal window within your container. We can then copy and paste that same wget command to install hacks. Now that's installed, I'm just going to exit out of that shell terminal. And we're going to head back over to our Home Assistant setup. We want to head over to developer tools and just give it a quick restart so that it can pick up those changes. Once it's restarted, you want to head over to settings, devices and services. You want to click on the integrations tab and you want to click add integration. In the search bar, you want to search for hacks. You have to go ahead and accept these and hit submit. Now it's going to ask you to open up GitHub and to paste a code in. Essentially, Hacks connects into your GitHub account with read-only access for the purposes of cloning certain repos and making that accessible within Home Assistant. So I'm just going to click that link. It'll say device activation, and we want to go ahead and copy and paste that code in. And it'll tell you that it's only going to get read-only access, so we'll authorize it. All done, go back to Home Assistant and click Finish. Go ahead and refresh the page and you should see a new menu item called Hacks on the left hand side. Go ahead and click that. Now we can go ahead and install PyScript using this feature. In the search bar at the top, we're going to type in PyScript and this is the one we want. Go ahead and click it and click Download. If we go back to the hacks menu and just clear that search result, uh, go filter by downloaded, we can see that we've got both hacks and PyScript successfully installed with on our Home Assistant setup. Now, in order to pick up the changes, we are going to have to give it another restart. So head over to developer tools, click the restart button, and just give it a minute to restart. The final step we have to do before we can use PyScript is to set up our configuration. We have to head over to this GitHub page and copy this section of code. And within your Home Assistant setup, you should have a config folder. Go into that config folder and you'll have a configuration.yaml file. Open that up. And what we want to do just down the bottom, we want to paste that block of code in. What this does is allows PyScript to be able to import things and access things globally across your Home Assistant setup, which we want it to do. And the other bit we want to add in is some logging information. 
we're going to default every log line to info. But specifically for our PyScript, we want to enable debug level logging, which will just make it easier to identify if things are working correctly when we go to execute our Python scripts. Go ahead, save that file and restart your home assistant. Uh, because I'm using a Raspberry Pi, it's read only. So I'm just going to quickly copy those and do it from the terminal window. So I go into my config directory, I'm going to do sudo nano configuration.yaml and then just paste it down the bottom. Exit, save. Now if I go back to my YouTube Home Assistant, go into my config, check my configuration.yaml, I should see those changes saved there, which is perfect. Okay, now let's go ahead and restart Home Assistant. Once Home Assistant has started up, we can make sure that everything is running correctly by heading over to Developer Tools, Services, and in the drop-down list, if you search for PyScript, you should see these two options. One to start the kernel, which we're not going to touch in this tutorial, but the other is to reload the scripts. Basically, anytime you add a new Python script, if you just simply call this service, it should pick it up call the service, and then any additional scripts we put in should appear in that drop-down list. So let's go ahead and create a very basic Hello World example. The way PyScript works is within your Home Assistant setup, it looks for this particular folder. Any file that you create with the .py extension within your config slash PyScript folder, will, it will pick up as a Python script that you can execute. So we're going to go ahead and quickly create that folder, head over to your setup, go into config. Looks like it's already created it there for me. So within here is where we want to create our new Python script. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file, call it hello world.py. Mm, okay. I'll do it through the command line. So I'm just going to do sudo space su to escalate my privileges to root. And I'm going to go nano hello world.py. Now, in order to access our Python script correctly, like to call it correctly from within PyScript, we have to expose it as a service. There are some great examples on their tutorial page. So what I'm going to do is just simply copy their hello world example, go back into modifying our file. I'm going to paste the entire content. So the important section is the at service and your function. So we've got a function called hello world. I'm going to delete all of the parameters and remove this. So it's literally just going to print out or log hello world to the console and get rid of the if statements. Go ahead, save the file. Now, if we go to Home Assistant, run the PyScript reload. Now, if I type in PyScript, we can see our Hello World custom Python script there ready to execute. Go ahead, click your Hello World and click call service. That should have logged Hello World to the console. The way we can check this is if we head over to settings, system, click on logs, Search for Pi script, and if you click on load full logs, we can see that it successfully called our Hello World Python script. That's pretty cool. Now you can create complete custom scripts and get as complicated as you like. I'm now going to show you a more complex example of one that I've created where I have all these different packages and dependencies being called within my script from within a Docker container. So I'll shut this YouTube demo Home Assistant setup down. I'll spin up my actual Home Assistant setup for you guys. And I'll show you guys some really important tips of how this hangs together, especially if you're trying to get some really complex Python scripts working within a container, because it can be uh, quite frustrating to get it working correctly. So let me help save you guys some of that frustration. This is my actual Home Assistant setup. So let me start by showing you the custom Python script that I created. Within my config folder, I have a PyScripts folder. And within here, I have a chat.py file. So let's go ahead, open this up. 
That's quite hard to read, so let me open it up in VS Code for you guys. So you can see the Python script is importing a bunch of third-party libraries. We've got our service defined as chat. We're setting an API key. Obviously, replace that with your actual API key. But we're calling ChatGPT's OpenAI endpoint. We're calling a second endpoint to take text, turn it into speech. And then finally, we're playing sound out loud using audio libraries. So we're doing a bunch of custom things. The really neat thing with PyScript is you can create a requirements.txt file like this, where you can specify all the external libraries that you want to install. So when my chat um, Python script is going to execute, it'll first check the requirements.txt file, go ahead and install these third-party libraries that are all required in order for the script to work correctly. And this was a key reason why I chose PyScript because I noticed a lot of the other ways of running custom Python scripts within Home Assistant didn't have this feature. Now, probably good practice. See how I've got multiple different Python scripts within here. I should create a folder and put each of these into their individual folders with their own requirements.txt files, which PyScript supports. It supports the ability to create subfolders. The final key thing that you need to know, especially if you're doing this in a container, is some of these third-party libraries actually require you to install a couple of packages external to this. So you can't just do pip install apply or pip install subprocess. There are other commands you have to run as a prerequisite. And this tripped me up for a long time. The way you get around this within a container is within your docker compose file normally you specify an image so you say hey take this particular image which automatically creates home assistant for you now what i had to do was comment that out completely say build and give a dot so what that will do is it will look for a docker file within your current working directory and then you have to create your own custom docker file so instead of sourcing the image directly from that source it will search for your Docker file. And within here, you say, grab that exact same image that you had before, but here you can have your run commands. So here we have run apk add and this particular package. Now this was very specific to playing sound on a Raspberry Pi, but if you get into dependency issues and you see a lot of errors in your log files of why you couldn't install a third party library, chances are you have to run a certain command and this is a place you would put it within that Docker file. Now, if you're not using containers, you can go ahead and just find the installation equivalent command and run it directly on the server that is running Home Assistant, but this is just something to keep in mind. Now, let me execute and show you what that looks like. So if I head over to developer tools service, search for my PyScript chat feature. If I go call service, you should hear something in a minute. You actually made it today. Guess miracles do happen. Welcome back to the circus. I'll call it again and we should get something completely different. Oh great, you're here. Just what this place needed. A walking tornado of chaos. And that's it in action. Basically a personalized greeting message whenever I walk in. And what I did was I took that custom Python script that I set up and I hooked it into an automation. Let me show you what that looks like. If I head over to settings, automations, I currently have two automations set up, one to turn my office lights off and the other to turn it on. So if I click on office lights on, when my Akara FP2 presence sensor detects that somebody has walked into the room, it will turn all of my lights on, but it will also execute my custom Python script. And this is where the magic happens. You guys can go out and create your own automations with your own unique requirements and call your custom Python functions within that. It gives you complete flexibility to do whatever you want. If you're planning to make your own custom Python scripts, could you let me know what you're actually gonna create in the comments down below? I'm always on the lookout for some cool ideas for me to implement in my own home lab setup. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.